I would just like to know what you can say to reassure us that this election will not be rigged or stolen. Well, well I tell you what, it, it helps in Ohio that we got uh, Democrats in charge of the machines. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Barack Obama in 2008. He went on to say that uh, Democrats and Republicans have pulled stuff and that when you vote, you should be able to come out of there with a kind of a receipt of who you voted for. Far from uh, what Barack Obama, you know, you would have thought he said based on the outrage of Trump that, oh, no, oh, rigged. Oh, don't, don't say that word. It can't be rigged. Come on. This is nothing new what Trump is saying. Anyway, joining us right now to weigh in on that and so much more, Republican congressman from the great state of Tennessee, Marsha Blackburn, chairman of the Congressional Select Committee on Infant Lives and vice chair of the Congressional Committee on Energy and Commerce. So good to see you. It's good to see in you. In studio. I love yes. that. All right. Um, first of all, before we get to that, uh, the, the polls. The polls are all over the place. The Washington Post poll out uh, yesterday or this morning, 12-point Hillary lead, but they only polled 20-some-odd percent of Republicans, 9 percent more Democrats. Independent uh, Investors Business Daily, Rasmussen, and, um, and LA Times, dead even. So who's right and where are we at this point? It's anybody's guess as to where we are. One thing we do know is that this campaign season has been anything but business as usual. And the only business as usual in it has been the Clinton machine. And they have pretty much stayed on track. I, I think that when you're out and across the country, Trump feels like he's doing better than the polls reflect that he's doing. I don't know what the mix is in a lot of these polls or if it's exactly as they say that it is. So I think it's anybody's guess. You just can't give up and have to keep going after every vote. Uh, the down ballot. Uh, there's been a lot of talk. You got Hillary today in New Hampshire uh, with Elizabeth Warren uh, promoting uh, Kelly Ayotte, uh, the, the, the opponent to Kelly Ayotte, who's the governor of New Hampshire. And um, Kelly Ayotte today was forced to basically say, I'm sorry, I said that Donald Trump was a role model. Um, are you concerned, let's focus on the Senate, are you concerned that the Senate could switch hands? I, in my opinion, uh, from what I've seen being out there, and I've been in New Hampshire, I think we hold the Senate. I've been in Nevada. And the ground game is good. The ground game is very strong. And you have so much, even though a lot of the information and the information flow is very, as we would say, high tech, the campaigns are very high touch. They are knocking on doors. They are into neighborhoods. They're into communities. They are really hammering this vote out. And not only going to Republican houses, but going to independent Democrat houses. Um, one of the things we're seeing is a lot of yards that are Democrat, registered Democrat voters have a Trump sign. And that is encouraging. If you want to make a change, then you're going to be with Donald Trump. If you're happy with the status quo, you're with Clinton. And in those down ballot races, what people want is uh, to have a House and a Senate that's actually going to get something done. Yeah, and it's funny you say about the signs. I was on WMAL radio over the weekend and had callers uh, from lots of people who did travel, including a couple of truck drivers who said they go into all these traditionally Democratic uh, areas, rest stops, neighborhoods, whatever, yeah. and they see Trump signs all over the yeah. place. So I hope, I hope you're all right. <laughs> yeah. It's been surprising, but encouraging. Yeah. Let, let me ask you uh, about um, uh, Joe Biden. On Friday, and we played this earlier in the show, he, he was go talking about Trump and saying, uh, people say, am I sorry I didn't run because so I didn't get a chance to debate him? He said, I don't want to debate him. I want to take him out behind the gym. Um, I mean, here we have the, the vice president of the United States saying about the Republican presidential nominee without two weeks outside of the election, Basically, I like to take out that guy behind the gym and fight him and beat his brains out. I mean, and, and nobody cares. That's, just, that's part two. Double standard. It does exist, and we are seeing it play out in this campaign. You know, whether it's one set of rules for the Clintons and their cronies and another set for the basket of deplorables and all the rest of us, or it is the way uh, temperament is addressed by the media. If you had had... Um, Dick Cheney, when he was vice president, saying something like that, the media would have been calling for 
him to retract the remarks, to issue apologies. And with Joe Biden, they just say, oh, Uncle Joe, there he goes again. And they excuse it and even laugh with him about the remark. You know, I, such you know, a di standard. You know, Michael McConish on CNN, right after he said that, came out and said, you know, Brooke, to Brooke Baldwin, that's why people love him, because that's how regular people talk. And I'm thinking, Donald Trump, I'm not talking about the sex thing. Donald Trump is how regular people talk, and all you guys do is kill him for what he says. But they love Crazy Joe. I mean, it, the whole thing is insane. Let me ask you about this. Um, talking about, uh, not typical, the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. We find out now from the Wall Street Journal today that, that the wife of the uh, FBI's deputy director, who was involved in the Clinton investigation, his wife, got $467,000 from Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe's PAC and got over $200,000 from the Democratic Party in Virginia in her state Senate run. Yes. And her husband was involved in a high level, reportedly, in the Clinton investigation. Again, nobody cares, and, but how could that be? How could that be allowed to happen? Well, it goes back to that double standard that is there and one set of rules for the Clintons. This is astounding that you have this woman that got nearly $700,000, almost half of her entire campaign budget, what she was spending, from Terry's super PAC and the Virginia Democrat Party, which he had oversight on. And that is what she used to run this race. Unbelievable. And then her husband should have recused himself. Absolutely. And should have made known uh, what was taking place. He should not have been a part. He should not have had anything to do with the Clinton investigation. And McAuliffe is also being investigated I by know. the FBI. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about recusing, if there uh, is a Supreme Court case similar to uh, Bush and Gore, uh, should Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who apologized for making, you know, derogatory remarks about Trump. Now, there are no rules on the Supreme Court, as Alan Dershowitz told me Friday. They, make their, they don't have to recuse okay. themselves, and nobody can make them. But do you believe she should step aside if there is a case involving Trump and Clinton? She should, because she has stepped out of line a couple of times with comments and has had to come back and retract and apologize. Uh, let me move on to something that um, is, is just, uh, on its face, is outrageous. Um, the Defense Department has ordered a, a 10,000 uh, national, former National Guardsmen from California to return a military bonus that they got, I believe, for, for re-enlisting, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because they said that the bonus was given uh, for, uh, improperly. It was, they didn't meet the rules at the time. So these people who served our country and volunteered and got a bonus now have to come up with the money to somehow pay back what they were given? This is horrific, absolutely horrific. Let me tell you who should pay that bonus back is the bureaucrats who made the mistake. Yeah. They're the ones that are, you know, they're over there at the Pentagon making six-figure salaries, and they're the ones that messed up. When you look at our enlisted men and women and our guardsmen, they are presented a contract, and they signed that contract. These contracts included a reenlistment bonus because there were quotas that had to be met. So in good faith, they accepted the contract. They executed on that contract. They fulfilled their duty. And then 10 years later, some of these individuals have had multiple deployments. Some were injured in the line of duty. Some are suffering from PTSD, and now they're coming to them and saying, give us the money back. You owe us this money. And they did nothing wrong. Right. They fulfilled They're the contract yeah, yeah. Track that they had signed. Right. And you've got somebody from the Pentagon that had to sign off on that contract. They made a mistake. It's their they made a mistake. That's right. Unbelievable. It, it really, it, it, you, can't, you can't make this up. It's just unbelievable. Right. Uh, let, let, me, let me ask you uh, finally about uh, some of the revelations um, from, from, uh, from WikiLeaks. Um, do you expect to see Donald Trump do commercials? I mean, we've got a minute left, and he's only got two weeks left in the campaign, so we're in the same, same boat. Um, 
Uh, Jesse Jackson in the 90s praising Donald Trump, I think would go a long way. I have that video. They must have it. Uh, the WikiLeaks revelation, the anti-Catholic, which he didn't bring up at the debate. He brought right. it up at that dinner, but not at the right. debate. All these things, don't, shouldn't they be commercials educating the public? Uh, that I, this I'm with you on that. If I were Donald Trump, I would spend the entire two weeks, I would talk about what's happened with the California Guardsmen and the situation at DOD and the VA. I would talk about emails. I would talk about the Clinton family. Foundation, and I would talk about the issues he outlined in his speech at Gettysburg. Yes, it was a great speech. Yes. It was a great speech, but, and, and he's got to get spots out there. He's got to get into the people's homes. He yes. really does. So good to see you. To Keep see up you. the good work. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Congressman Marsha Blackburn, ladies and gentlemen. Now, speaking of the military, as we did, uh, we have a very special guest, former U.S. Marine Staff Sergeant and author of a great new book, Dagger 22, U.S. Marine Corps Special Operations, a man who served proudly in Afghanistan, has a wonderful story to tell. I don't want you to miss it, so stay tuned. Don't go away.